welcome to this month's edition of What's New for Apps Admins, where we cover the new features that have rolled out in Google Apps over the last month. My name is Stephen Long and I'm a member of the Google for Work training team and I'll be taking you through these December updates. Let's take a look at our agenda. We'll start with our admin specific updates, take a look at some drive updates, talk about the latest mobile apps and finally look at some changes to the Google Apps APIs. Let's look at the admin updates for December. We'll start with a better place to manage your apps. As a Google Apps administrator, you can control whether services such as YouTube or Google Plus are available to your users by turning on or off services in the Google Admin Console. You can turn a service on or off for everyone or only for people in a particular organizational unit. To make it easier to find and manage your apps, we've introduced a new apps icon in the Admin Console. The apps icon is the one place to manage Google Apps, additional Google services and Google Marketplace apps. Let's check out the new icon in the Admin Console. In your dashboard, you'll see this new Apps icon, and when you click this, you're going to see the following controls. So what's the difference between these services? So if we click into Google Apps, you'll see services like Gmail, Calendar, Drive, Hangouts, and other services in the Google Apps suite. These are the Google Apps core services which have a Terms of Service agreement and are fully supported by Google Apps Support. If we click into additional Google services, you'll see services like Blogger, YouTube, Google+, Google Wallet, and these are the other services that are available to use by your users but are not covered by the Google Terms of Service Agreement and are not supported by Google Apps Support. For these services, if you need help, you can go to the Google Help Center or to Help Forms. One thing to notice here is that there's a filter on these services already, so it's only showing top featured services. As you can see from the top, there's only 14 services visible. Now, if I was to remove this filter, you'll see that this number goes up to 69 services. So if you scroll down, there's 69 additional Google services available for use by your users. If we go back to underneath the apps icon, the final option here is Marketplace Apps. Under Marketplace Apps, you'll find any service you've added from the Google Apps Marketplace. The Google Apps Marketplace features hundreds of third-party apps that complement the suite of tools in Google Apps for Work. Warranties and support for third-party Marketplace apps are provided by the vendors and not by Google Apps Support. So, now with the apps icon, all these apps are located in the one place to make it easier for admins to access the apps controls they need when they need them. Now let's take a look at the upcoming removal of the App Search Lab feature. The App Search Lab feature launched in 2010 and it extends the Gmail search to include relevant results from your Google Docs, Sheets and Slides content and displays them in the results. Currently, admins have the option in the Admin Console to enable this lab feature for everyone in their domain or allow users to add it individually if they wish. However, lots has happened since 2010. Gmail search has been improved to automatically display results from Google Docs, Sheets and Slides, plus Calendar and Google Plus content. Since Gmail Search is doing this all by default now, we'll be ending the App Search Lab experiment and removing it from Gmail Labs and Advanced Lab Management section in the Admin Console in early 2015. We'll provide additional guidance on the specific date of the feature removal on the Google Apps release calendar. While we're on the subject, let's talk a little bit more about Labs. Gmail Labs are experimental pre-release features that users can enable to add key business functionality to their inboxes. When Gmail Labs are enabled, Users can go to the Labs tab in Gmail Settings. Here they can turn on any labs they wish to use. As we can see from the top, App Search here, this is the one that's going away soon. So let's take a look at what control you have over Google Labs in your domain. From the dashboard of the Admin Console, if you click Apps, then Google Apps, and then go to the Gmail Settings. Under the Gmail Settings, you'll see the Lab section. Labs are allowed by default, so to enable users to use any of the available labs, just make sure that the Enable Gmail Labs for My Users is selected. To control which labs a user can or must see, you can select Advanced Labs Management and select for each available lab whether it's allowed, so users have the option to enable it, Enabled, so the lab is enabled for all users, or Disabled, where users can't use this lab. It's important to note that enabling Gmail Labs makes them available for all users. If you have multiple domains associated with your Google Apps account, the settings apply to all domains. Remember, because Gmail Labs are experimental and are not officially released, they may change, break or disappear at any time. The next update we're going to look at is new reports, policies and more for iOS Sync. 
Earlier this year, we launched a new iOS Mobile Device Management, or MDM, solution, known as iOS Sync for Google Apps. This integrates Google Mobile Apps with native iOS device management. This allows Google Apps users to use a corporate account with their iOS device more securely. In December, we launched several new features and improvements for iOS Sync, including more security policies, such as backup and lock screen policies, an extra reporting capability with updated reports in the admin console, such as managed iOS devices, showing 7-day and 30-day active. There's also new reports features and refreshed information for individual devices. To access these new security settings in the admin console, go to Device Management and under Mobile Management in the Device Management settings. So here we can see the settings for enabling iOS Sync and enforcing policies on iOS devices. If you decide to enforce security policies for the iOS users in your domain, if we then scroll down, you'll see some of the specific iOS settings that you can enforce. Take, for example, one of the new backup policies, encrypted backup. This forces all backups to iTunes to be encrypted for iOS devices. If this setting is enabled, when a user backs up their iOS device to iTunes, the encrypt backup box in the iTunes device summary screen is checked and the user can't uncheck it. This setting is turned off by default. Note, an iOS device can't be backed up without the user's permission. Another example of one of the new lock screen settings is the notifications view. This allows users to swipe down from the top screen to see the notifications view when their iOS device is locked. This setting is turned on by default. However, if you had a particular org in your domain who was likely to have very sensitive information come up in their notifications, you could disable notifications view for that org. The updated reports can be accessed from the reports icon. Under aggregate reports, you'll see in the my reports dropdown there's a mobile section. If we click into this, you'll see reports on things like managed devices, managed Android devices, managed iOS devices. But if we go to the select reports section, you'll see here in the mobile section that there's plenty of options around mobile devices, such as iOS devices 7-day active and managed iOS devices 30-day active. These new features mean increased security and productivity for iOS devices. For more information on what each of the settings means, See the Configure Mobile Device Settings Help Center article linked below the slides. The next update is around admin provisioning of Google Plus profiles for organizational units. A few weeks ago, we launched a capability for Google Apps admins to give individual users a Google Plus profile in order to connect with other employees and encourage collaboration and sharing in the organization. We're now extending this capability so that admins can perform automatic profile upgrades for an entire organizational unit. Let's look at how this works in the admin console. If we select apps, then additional Google services, and find Google Plus. Previously, we saw that if you click profile, you can create individual profiles for a single user. However, if you click sharing settings instead, we're gonna see the bulk upload option for a whole organization. First, on the left here, you can choose your particular organizational unit that you want to create Google Plus profiles for. I'm going to choose Early Adopters. And if I scroll down then to the Profile Creation section, you'll see there's an option to automatically create Google Plus profiles. If the Google Plus service has already been enabled for this specific organization, then you as an admin can simply select this option and a public Google Plus profile will be created for all the users in this organization. When new users are created or anyone is added to this organization, a public Google Plus profile will also be created for their account. Since this feature automatically creates Google Plus profiles for all current and future users in the organizational unit, you must verify that all users are 18 years old or older. Users under 18 should be added to a different organizational unit with automatic profile creation turned off. Once you certify that all the users in the organization are over the age of 18, and click apply and then save changes. An email is also sent to the users letting them know about their new Google Plus profile and including tips to get the most out of Google Plus. This launch applies to Google Apps for Work, Unlimited, Government and Higher Education EDU domains only. K-12 EDU domains are excluded. You can find out more by checking out the update announcements and the Help Center articles by following the links below the slide in the presentation. The next update we'll talk about is easy troubleshooting using Calendar Audit. Sometimes calendar events change, 
like an event being deleted or updated, the removal of a booked room, or the change to the list of invitees. To an admin, it's not clear how these changes came about. Starting this month, admins can use the new calendar audit feature in admin reports to see details of specific user actions within Google Calendar. Let's check this out in the admin console. If you select reports and go to the audit section, you'll see the calendar audit. The calendar audit log lets you track changes to calendars, events and subscriptions for users in your domain and troubleshoot when users notice discrepancies and unexpected changes to their calendars. Entries usually appear within a half an hour of the user action. As you can see in this log, for example, the user Barney Gumbel created a new event Team Bonding Paintball Frenzy with the activity name Event Created. Then there's an event guest response changed from user Lois Lane, showing she's changed the response to mm, tentative. Looks like Lois isn't a fan of paintball. If I wanted to know some more details about when these events happened, I can go to the Select Columns button and also show the date. As you can see, this calendar audit log gives a lot more visibility to what calendar events are happening in your domain. Calendar audit data is also available via the Reports API for calendar activity. Note this feature is not available for Google Apps for government customers. For more detail on the audit log, check the calendar audit log section of the Reports Help Center. Another quick update that might be interesting to you admins out there is the ability for users to create custom status messages for Google Hangouts. We're bringing back one of the most requested features for those who use Hangouts in Gmail, status messages. People using Google Hangouts in the web can now add custom status messages and see the status messages of other users in the contacts view. By default, custom status messages will be displayed outside of the domain, though admins have the option to restrict status messages to only be visible internally within the domain. In the admin console, under Apps, Google Apps, and Talk Hangouts. Under Sharing Settings, and here we see the sharing option, display users' chat status outside the domain. This feature is coming soon for the Hangouts Android and iOS apps. So that's the end of the admin updates. Let's move on to some quick updates relevant to your mobile users. So there are new versions of the Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides apps, both for Android, now available on Google Play, and iOS apps, now available in the App Store. There are plenty of great new features making the mobile experience of Google Apps even better so it's now even easier to work on the go. To download the new versions, check out the links below the slides in the presentation. Now let's look at some Drive updates. The first is you can now add an image to your Gmail signature from Google Drive. Your users can create their own email signature that's inserted at the bottom of every message they send. We know all you admins out there want to provide your users with the best, most seamless experience when designing their email signatures. Users can customize their Gmail signature with the same formatting toolbar that they use to compose messages in Gmail. In Gmail, if they go to Settings, then in the General tab, they can scroll down to the Email Signature section. Here they can insert images or hyperlinks or add colored or bolded text and much more. We've made it easier to add images to Gmail signatures on the web by enabling the option to choose and display images from Google Drive. So for example, if I click in here to add an image, find an image that's already in my Google Drive, and select, that image is now available in my signature. How many of you admins have been asked, is there an easy way for me to set up my personal email signature? Well, the answer now is yes. Users can customize their signature with an image from Drive or even from a shared image that you, the admin, provides. Just be aware that if you are going to do that, don't forget to turn on external sharing settings in Drive. In the sharing settings section, the sharing option for files owned by users in your domain to be shared outside of the domain must be selected for this feature to work. Another Drive update relevant for your users is the changes to Google Drive supported formats. We realize as a Docs user, you still sometimes have to work with different file types. So we often launch updates to make it a little smoother for you. The first update is around conversion support for additional Microsoft Office formats. Converting a file to Google Docs, Sheets, or Slides allows your users to edit, collaborate on, and share the file online. When they convert the file, the original file will remain intact and accessible from Google Drive. A copy of the file in a Google format appears in their My Drive 
in Google Drive on the web. Your users can now import 15 new Office formats, including presentation show files, PPS and PPSX, macro enable files and template files, all with improved charts, images and table support. Here you can see a full list of the new formats supported. Another update is the complete ODF file format support and more for Google Docs editors. ODF stands for Open Document Format and is an international family of standards for Office applications. With this launch, we now support importing all three major ODF file formats .odt files for documents, .ods files for spreadsheets, and .odp files for presentations. With these updates and more, we want to make Drive work better for you, so you have to work less. We're going to finish up now with some API updates for all you admins out there who are also dealing with some development tools. First off, the quota for Calendar API version 3 is now 10 times higher. At Google, we like to make 10 times rather than 10% improvements. In this spirit, we're increasing the default quota for the Calendar API version 3 by a factor of 10, to 1 million requests per day. That means your application can support 10 times as many users without any need to apply for more quota. And if you need even more free quota, you can apply for it in the developer console under APIs, Calendar API, Quota, and Apply for Higher Quota. We've also streamlined the process of quota handling to make sure you receive your quota as quickly as possible. For more tips to work efficiently with your quota, see the update announcement in the links below the slide. I'll finish the API updates with a reminder to migrate to updated Google Data APIs. Over the past few years, we've been updating our APIs with new versions across Drive and Calendar, as well as those used for managing Google Apps for work domains. These new APIs offer developers several improvements over older versions of the API. With each of the introductions, we also announced the deprecation of a set of corresponding APIs. As communicated back in September, the deprecation period for these APIs is coming to an end. As of April 20th, 2015, we will discontinue these deprecated APIs. Calls to these APIs and any features in your application that depend on them will not work after April 20th. Here is a list of the discontinued APIs and their corresponding replacement APIs. When updating, we also recommend that you use the opportunity to switch to OAuth 2 for authorization. Older protocols such as Client Login, AuthSub, and OpenID 2.0 have also been deprecated and are scheduled to shut down. In the coming weeks, we'll be contacting domain administrators whose applications are still using these deprecated APIs with an email reminder and guidance on specific migration paths. And lastly, we want you to stay informed. If you're looking for a full rundown of all the features released last month, then check out the Google Apps release calendar, where you can see the date and type for each release. Or alternatively, check out the What's New in Google Apps newsletter for all the updates and more info on what they mean. You can find this newsletter on the What's New page above the release calendar or in the link below. So that's it from us this month. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your comments and questions below the video. This has been What's New for Apps Admins, December 2014 edition. Thanks and catch you all next month.